Welcome back. Today we're going to tie my new sculpin. I uh, came up with here about, oh, probably two months back. Put a little sculpin pattern together. But this is going to wind up being a series. There's going to wind up being four or five variations of this fly. Uh, we'll get through them here uh, over the next couple of months. I'll sprinkle them in as, as we go. Um, this is going to be the original. This is the DFT sculpin. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started on this one. To start, this is an MFC 7008, uh, size 4. So it's a 4X long hook. Yeah, we got a good grip there. Like I said, 4X long hook. I'm just going to start my thread right where I'm going to have the deer hair work start, get a thread base down, take this to the ascent of the barb of the hook and then come forward just slightly. And then I'm going to start this thing with some, these are MFC um, barge slopping. This is um, what is it? Olive and black. I'm down toward the end of the pack here, so finding stuff to match up was a little bit tough, but I think we got something that'll suffice. And then I'm going to take this tail just to the uh, end of the lever on the Red Zeti here. Um, try and get a accurate length here for those of you tying on something different that we know about the length that we're going to be working with on this tail and then I just want to tie that in deceiver style make sure that those yeah they work it's not the it's not the best match in the world but it'll it'll get the job done it'll do the trick that's a little bit on the long side there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. It's only about a quarter of an inch, so I'll leave it pretty close to what we're typically after on that. Now I'm going to take some flash. This is just a mix. This is a uh, Dorado Gold blend. Um, this is the first time using this mix. Typically I'll have like a greenish blue combination going back there but this has got some gold and red and some clear I'm just gonna get like one or two strands of that orangish red and throw that in get that off to the side there so I just want to take this and then I'm gonna run that down about three quarters of the way back my tail. I'm gonna wet that, make it a little bit easier to work with. About three quarters of the way down my tail there. And then we'll just take this around. And get the same thing on the opposite side. There we go. Keep that off to the side for a fly later on down the road. Or maybe I mess this one up and have to start over. Who knows? But anyhow, we'll see how this one goes. Hopefully, pretty smooth. Alright, now I'm going to take two, two plumes of cream marabou. Um, there's one and that's yeah, a little too thick. That one's busted up. Yeah, that one will do. There's two two plumes of marabou. I'm gonna run these down the sides. Um, they're gonna be tied in at an angle downward. So I want them going just about like that is what I have. 
covering up that back section just slightly, giving me a little bit of a color differential um, that'll allow that cream underneath side to come through on this tail section. And then I'm gonna just take and do the same thing going down the other side. So there we go. Set that in place. Get those wraps secure. And then I'm just going to even that up on that side. So now I want to take this and just build a little bit of bulk on my hook there to about my halfway point. And then I'm going to trim those off. Before I move into the body on this one, I'm going to throw a little bit of an overwing. This is some Bard MFC olive and black marabou. This one I'm not worried about being too thick. I just want some color back there um, going over the top. And it also kind of forces, well, it keeps that cream in place slightly. Keeps it from wanting to travel up a whole lot. So I just throw a quick one in there. You can omit that that feather or that plume of marabou if you want. And that's entirely up to you. Um, I like to throw it in there. Like I said, it limits the travel a little bit and it just makes a nice little uh, transition on the way back and it adds some dimension to that tail. Once again trimming that off at the halfway point. Um, let me see here. Now we're going to go into a dubbing loop. And I actually want to keep this off to the side. Now let me lengthen that out just slightly. keep this one off to the side right here and I'm going to form a second loop so there we go we're going to run that right to just close to our halfway point there now I'm going to set that one there and what I want to do is take and put a body in here first. Now this step you can absolutely omit if you would like. Um, I like to do this, it adds a little bit of extra flash to the fly and it gives a little bit of, uh, it just adds a little bit of dimension to the bottom. I don't go real heavy with this stuff um, this is just some minnow belly uh, ice dub. So now I want to keep this out of my way here. And then just go with a quick rotation. Every once in a while just peeling this out so it's not in the way. Just a quick rotation. You don't have to have perfect coverage on this. Um, what did I do there? What did I do? Just all the way up to the front. Now you can, by all means, you can go ahead and spin that by hand if you want and lay that in. Um, I like that it gets a little picked out this way. Um, it's just a little pickier to me, so I prefer to do it that way. It takes a little bit of extra to uh, keep everything out of the way with this second loop that we're gonna use for the rest of our body. But I like the way that it looks. So that's the way that I go with it. But like I said, if you wanna go the opposite way and you just wanna you just wanna twist that up by hand for that dubbing, by all means have at it. Or if you want to, go ahead and omit that all together. So now I'm gonna go with some flesh rabbit strips. Oh, let me see. 
here. Then we're going to take our hairline material clamp like we demonstrated in the uh, product review here oh, a couple of weeks back. Just going to take these strips, we're going to throw this in our dubbing loop. I can't get that stuff to cooperate with me. I'm working right on the bend there, so I don't need a ton of this. Probably only about half of that two inch working section. I'm going to take a little bit more than half um, just because I want it to be a little bit. I, I want to make sure that I have enough material. And then I can spread that out as I need. I got a little carried away on the length of that loop. So there you can see we have that section sitting right there. I'm just going to spin this loop real quick. I'm going to work that rabbit. Get that spun up pretty tight actually. Um, I'm probably going to take three turns on this. It seems like the tighter you get these rabbit loops, or the yeah the rabbit loops, the the better it works for you. The, the easier you're able to control it. So there you can see we have that nice section of rabbit right there and I'm not doing one wrap right in front of the next I'm just going to spiral this through and that way there we go you can see I got about three wraps in there but this way I'm not suppressing the uh, the body material And once I get that cut, I'll flip this underneath and you're going to be able to see if the light's hitting it properly. I don't know if it is or not. I can't really tell um, in the monitor. But when this thing's in the water and it kicks on its side, that flash right there comes out. Um, any light penetration whatsoever, that flash jumps out at you and you can even see it. It's really apparent in the water and it's something that I really think adds a dimension to this fly. So, on to our overwing here. We're going to go back to some MFC Marabou. Uh, I don't know if that one's going to be thick enough. I may need to double it up. We'll see what we got. We'll see what we got. Let's kick that off to the side for now. Um... Yeah, it's going to be a little sparse. I'm going to have to throw two in here. Uh, yeah, I'm taking that about halfway back. The uh, first plume that I tied in there. Let me get that for a little bit of bulk. A little bit of bulk. There we go. So I have that going about halfway back. I'm going to find another plume of marabou here, something a little bit webbier, hopefully, a little bit thicker. Yeah, that's junk. Here's a pretty decent piece. There's a pretty decent piece right there. This will fill this out nicely. just looking to build some dimension to this fly. Now when it gets wet this is going to sink down and it's just going to go with that color scheme the whole way back. It's going to have that mottled appearance on the top and then you're going to have that um, pearl underbody that the sculpin are known for. So we'll set that right there and then we're going to repeat this process with the body and the rabbit. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to form my first loop, keeping that one a little bit shorter this time. Now I'll form my second loop for the ice dub, just work that to the back. I'm going to 
gonna take this all the way up to the front or up to where I'm gonna start with the deer hair work. Get that one out of the way. Get that loop ready for the ice stub. Oh, give me you. Now we'll go back to this minnow belly. It's got some longer strands to it. Um, I, I like to keep this loop, like I was saying on the last one, a little bit more loose. Just manipulate those fibers around. And then we'll work this right through, continuing with that internal flash on that, uh, on our on our lateral lines and on the belly. So there we've got that. Trim that section off and then move to our other loop. cleaning some of those fibers up there with a couple of thread wraps. So I'm going to go back to the flesh rabbit here and I'm going to take just the same, the same amount, probably um, three quarters of the working portion of this clamp and get that make sure I'm in the frame. Just cut that right along the hide section, kind of even everything out. We'll get this thrown in the loop. Get everything out of there and push that stuff as close to the butts as I can. And then give that a good tight spin again. We'll go one. I think I can get a little bit more on that and we'll get a third there we go that's nice and clean and then like just like before I'm going to open loop this there's one two and we'll go with three and trim that right there I'm still going to get one more section in here I'm going to add that out of the way first. I'm going to add just a little bit of red underneath here. If you want to, you could go with, uh, you could go with like some laser dub or something like that. I'm going to do one more loop. Get that coming in. But I'm going to go with some rabbit strips on this. I've tied it with a couple of different things. I really like the way that this rabbit turns out. Um, so that's what I tend to go with when I do this. If you want, you can measure everything out and do it in one loop. Um, but I typically only go with this rabbit in, or this red in a separate loop. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to control where everything's at and I don't have a ton of migration from the red into the cream or anything like that. So now I just want to take and half hitch this and I'm going to throw my red into my loop here. I'm not going to wind up using all of that. I only want about one and a half turns of this red. But I'm going to throw that extra in there just in case. Every once in a while you'll hit a sparse spot in the, in the red and you're like, man, I wish I could have made one more turn out of that. So this will help out 
that's the reason I add that little bit of extra. So we'll just take our one loop right there. One, two, that's uh, one and a half. Let me see what it looks like underneath. That looks pretty good right there. I'm just going to take this and tie that off. Get rid of some of that junk right there. And then I'm going to work my way back to where I'm going to have the deer hair head. clean that up slightly and then I'm gonna peel this around you can or I'm gonna spin this around you can see you have just a real subtle red tint underneath there um, I'm gonna take this top and just kind of work this down slightly with my with my fingers just kind of peel that down and I'm gonna make a few wraps a little bit further back it just kind of adds a little bit more red down there and it kind of just peels everything down so you can see that top section is pretty clean and then I'm going to go with one more strand of marabou here and this is once again just more so than anything it's just to keep that red from migrating so I'm going to put one more plume in here and I'm going to run that back into my previous marabou plume get that tied into place and secure and then we'll go ahead and trim that off I don't really worry too much about the thickness on this one because as you're gonna see our deer hair collar is gonna cover a lot of that up so like I said I don't really worry about the thickness too much it's just to aid or to to keep that red from migrating up to the top more so than anything so now we're going to switch over to a one or a 200. Get a quick whip finish in there. Tie that or trim that off. And we're going to go into our 200. Take that right back to where we left off. And then I'm just going to really pull down, really set that thread into place there. Get a nice, uh, nice grip on that. I'm not too happy with those slopping feathers, but it'll work. It'll work. All right. So now for the fun part. Now we're gonna, we're gonna blend some, uh, some deer hair here. We're gonna take some olive and black. And mix this in for both the head and and for the collar so I'm just gonna start with this olive here I'm gonna get this cleaned out and then throw that in the comb off to the side for now I'm gonna take about the same amount maybe a little bit more black Maybe just slightly more black. And then we'll trim that down. We'll clean this out as well. This black's a little bit thicker than the olive is, so I may not need as much. And then I'm going to set that in. I'm going to grab both of these. And then I'm just going to mix this in my hand. So all I'm really doing is just picking this stuff out and mixing it as best as I can. It's going to be a mess. I wind up taking more than what I'm going to need on this because I'm going to drop a decent amount. And then all it is, it's just kind of like you're shuffling cards, really. Um, you're just moving this stuff around, trying to get a nice blend into this, what's going to be our collar. And then we're going to bring this over. That's a decent mix right there, as you can see. It's a pretty decent mix so I'm gonna move this now into our stacker and drop that in let me see how we're looking 
smoke here. That looks pretty clean. That looks pretty clean. That's probably a little bit more hair than what I need. But I'm probably still going to drop a little bit of this, so. Wind up having a wind up having a pretty good chunk for our collar here. So now remember on these 4x long hooks, your aiming point for the length of the collar is at max the point of your hook. There's a couple longer hairs right there. So I'm just gonna transfer hands. I'm gonna make a nice clean cut like so. And then this is strictly a collar. That's all we're going to use this for. I want to go one, two, really start to tighten down on that. And then there's our third. I'm going to move that around with my thumb slightly. And then work through the remainder of it. There, as you can see on that underneath side, you've got that red from that rabbit. You've got a nice split right through there. And it just shows up nicely. You can see some of that internal flash through there with the ice dub that we used. It really has a neat effect on the fly, and I really like the way that it, that it works in the water. Again, you can see that our tips right here, they're stopping just shy of the point of our hook, so we're in good shape as far as that goes. Now I'm going to advance right in front of this, and I'm going to half hitch. Just to keep anything from shifting on me there while I'm working on this bleached deer hair. I'm going to take about oh, I'm not get good at the uh, guessing the amount or giving a good reference as to how much material I'm working with here. I'm just going to hold that up so you can see it. That's about the amount of bleach that I'm working with. I'd say probably a quarter of what you use for the collar. And then I'm going to clean the tips off. And this is strictly going underneath to follow with that theme of the cream underside and then the black and olive on the top. So I have two good spin or two good wraps on that and then I want one more and then I'm just gonna pull straight down and flare that hair out. And a little bit of I had two fibers there wanting to travel a little bit, but there you can see we have a nice clean platform on the top, and then we're going to go back to our olive and black, and we're just going to do a stack on the top of this. So I'm going to take the olive once again, clean this out, pull that through. Set that off to the side. We're going to grab a little bit of black. There's a pretty good wave in this black hair that's not ideal for collars, but I think we'll be able to work with it for the rest of the head. I just had to pick a pretty good clean spot out of that black uh, hide there. There's a pretty good cow lick in it, so once again, we're just going to take this, I made a mess out of that first one. We're just going to take this and move this around in our hands. Before when I did this, I used to put it on a piece of paper and crease the paper. Um, I don't know, it seems like I wound up dropping a lot more and I didn't get a really good mix on it. Or not as good of a mix as what I get with this. It takes a little bit of time to do this. Um, but I do like the way that it looks. So, I'm going to pull all of that together, throw it in a stacker, just to make things a little bit more even here. So, I'm working with the center of that hair bundle as much as I can. I'm 
there we go and then I'm just gonna clean this up get rid of any of this stuff that's in the it's in that bundle that's loose and then I'm gonna cut the tips off working right with the center section of this I have probably twice as much is what I used on that bleached. I just got some of that stuff underneath that I want to get rid of there. Like I said, probably twice as much as what I used on the bleached, and I just want this on the top. So I'm going to go one wrap over the top there, get a second pull down. My thread starts to disappear. Now one bleached hair trying to work its way up there. Get back where you belong working my way right through here and then just pulling down I'm flaring that stuff out and the black and olive stays on the top we got a nice clean section to work with there and then I have just a little bit of room right in the front where I want to spin one full section of black and olive so you can see just that little section that I've got right there. I don't need a ton of hair here. Uh, neighbor's dogs making noise. All right, we're gonna clean that black out, set that off to the side. Then we're gonna take a chunk of olive same thing as before clean this off and we'll set that in mix these two up once again just shuffle on these around in your hand just getting a nice mix getting a nice mix here Blacks a little bit on the heavy side. Yeah, no, it actually looks pretty good. I may have just had one section there that was a little heavy. I throw that back in the stacker just to even everything out a little bit. Oh, I got deer hair everywhere. All right. Like I was saying, I just want one spin right in the front of this. Right in the front, I want one clean spin. I'm gonna peel all of this back. I'm gonna set that bundle right on the top. And then I'm going underneath. I've got one, two, catching nothing but that bundle that I'm tying in, get a third and then it falls off. Now, let's see here, hopefully I'm able to save this one. Hopefully I'm able to save this one, there we go. I got lucky, I got lucky. Just kinda even that stuff back up again. I got that a little close to the front there, but we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We'll still be able to get a spin out of this. I may have to block the camera here just to make sure that I'm staying above where I need to be. All right, we've got a quick rotation of deer hair there. Pull that back slightly. Make sure that we have some working underneath. Clear out our eye. There we go. We've got a clean eye underneath there. Uh, got a 
little bit closer than what I would have liked it. But we made it work. Everything's still nice and clean there. We've got a nice section, as you can see, that eye's nice and clear. We've got plenty of room to work with. I just got it a little bit closer. I probably could have went a little lighter with that bundle, but overall we're in pretty good shape here. So now we're going to do the trim on this. This is the final step on this fly. I want to take on this underneath side. I'm going to stabilize my right hand with my left, and I'm just going to take a swipe right on the bottom. I want that nice and flat on the underneath side. We're going to form a really broad sculpting head here. That blade's getting down to the end. There we go. There you can see that nice clean color break that we're after on that uh, between the cream and the the olive and black and then I'm going to take this and I'm aiming right at the tips and as I'm working back with this razor blade I'm loosening up on the curve that I have so I may start with something along those lines but as I get to the back all I'm doing is that with my hand and allowing that to broaden out on this head right there and you can see how broad that is We've got that black and olive mix through there. Now I'm just gonna take and clean this up. This blade's about on its last leg here. I'm just gonna take and clean this up. Start to get my shape that I want on this. There are collars coming into, into place. Collars coming into view nicely. I should say that's representing the pectoral fins I had a little bit of travel on that cream on the underneath side you can see it got a little heavy on this side as opposed to the other um, not the end of the world that's not anything that I'm too awful concerned about just something I'll clean up or be mindful of over the next couple that I'm tying probably what happens when I when I loosened up or probably just didn't pull straight down on it when I was pulling I probably had a little pull this way and it kicked it that kicked it that direction but I'm not gonna lose sleep over it tonight there we go now before I finish this thing up or before I do any last bit of trim there I'm just gonna take and shape this head slightly I'm going to cut a little wedge into it. Having the taper toward the front, and you'll be able to see that angle that I'm working. I'm still going to have a really nice broad head in the back, but it's going to have that taper just like Sculpt and have. So. And there you can see what we have. I don't know, I might lose sleep on that one. It, I don't really like it that much. I don't really like it that much. That was, that was a little sloppy. Not that, it would've been nice if I could've got it around, <clears throat> excuse me, got it around on both sides. That would've made a pretty neat, uh, neat little look there, but that's all right. That's all right, it's still gonna fish. I'm going to just clean that bottom up a little bit. I'm going to make it a little more flat. Go through here, make sure that I'm able to see my, my red nice and clear. Get rid of a couple hairs here on the underneath side without catching any of that rabbit. stop right there I'll clean some more of this up as as I go but there you can see 
the profile that we're after on that skull. And you can see the head on this one. It's got a really nice broad head. Those pectoral fins really show out nice in the water. And then you've got that color scheme working its way back on the top section to where you have the black in all, all the way back. And then on the underneath side, you've got all the cream and then the red and then that head that I messed up, this fly will probably get, it ain't gonna get thrown in the trash. I'm still gonna fish it. But I did get a little sloppy on that head right there. I could have really had that a lot cleaner. Um, and you can see it did kick to the side on me quite a bit. But that's all right, we'll get the next one. By the time I do the next video on the variation on this pattern, um, maybe I'll be a little bit better of a fly tire and I'll be able to get that right next time. So we'll see. But there it is, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me, swallowing deer hair or something. There is the DFT Sculpin. Uh, if you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week.